Welcome back. How do we develop storytelling skills in our students? Here are the guidelines to follow. One, select the story carefully. Every storyteller should select a story he can bring to life. It will be one that he feels he simply must tell it to others. He must know it well so that he can communicate it freely without recourse to notes or efforts to remember. Two, know the story well. How does one learn a story well? First, it must be read several times until the flow of incidents, characters, and each mental picture are vivid in the reader's mind. Set aside and think it through, incident by incident. If the story is to live for others, it must first be alive for you. Study the characters and their words. Sequence the events and translate the story into their words. Three, introduce the story carefully. There is a tendency on the part of many storytellers to provide such an elaborate introduction that nothing remains to be told. What should be done then? Lead in naturally into the story. A story worth telling is worth getting on with. The story is the thing. Relay the story simply to the experience of the audience. Four, pace the story. Some stories require a measured cadence. Others are told trippingly. Some stories are ponderous and move clumsily. Still others emerge hesitantly. Pacing the story is one of the most salient points to consider. Five, use the voice effectively. Certainly, the most important ingredient in storytelling is the voice of the storyteller. He or she may use no gestures, a few facial expressions, but his or her voice carries the story. We are now ready to take up the last type which lends itself strongly to oral interpretation. And this is the chamber theater. What is a chamber theater? It is a method of staging a prose fiction, retaining the text, but locating the scenes on stage. The only changes should be those to accommodate the limitation of time, physical setup, or numbers of actors and actresses. Why don't we watch a class of students who are trying to interpret a piece for chamber theater? One day, a farmer went with his oxen to plow his field. When he had just turned the first furrow, the tiger walked up and said, Peace be with you, friend. How are you this fine morning? Uh, the, 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 the same to you, my lord. And I'm pretty well, replied the farmer, quaking with fear, but thinking it wisest to be polite. I am glad to hear it, because heaven sent me to eat you too often, said the tiger cheerfully. You are a God-fearing man, I know, so make haste and unyoke them. Aren't you making a mistake, my lord? Asked the farmer. His courage has returned. Now that he knew that the tiger was proposing to gobble up its oxen, not him. Heaven sent me to plow this field, and in order to do so, I must have the oxen. Hadn't you better go and make further inquiries? There's no need to delay, and I should be sorry to keep you waiting, said the tiger. If you are no dogs, I'll be ready in a moment to hear them. With that, the tiger sharpened his claws in a very frightening manner. The farmer begged and prayed that his oxen might not be eaten, and promised that if the tiger would spare them, he would give in exchange a fine, young, fat milk cow of his wives. To this, the tiger agreed and took the oxen with him for safety. The farmer hurried home. Seeing him return early from his field, the wife, who was an energetic, hard-working woman, called out, What? Let 
lazy bones! Back already in my work just beginning? The farmer explained how he had met the tiger, how he saved his oxen, and how he gave the cow in exchange. At this, his wife began to shout, saying, A lively story indeed! What do you mean by saying that your stupid oxen will be spared at the expense of my beautiful cow? Where will the children get milk? How will I cook without butter, huh? Oh, very fine, wife, retorted the farmer. But how can we make bread without grain? How can we make grain without oxen to plow the spill? It is surely better to do without milk and butter than without bread. So make haste, and tie your house. You great silly, scolded his wife. If you had an ounce of sense in your brain, you'd think of a better plan to get us out of our difficulty. Think on yourself, cried the farmer in a rage. So I will, replied the wife. But if I do the thinking, you must obey me, for I can do both. Now, go back to the tiger and tell him that the cow would not come with you and that your wife is bringing it. The farmer, who was a great coward, didn't like the idea of going empty-handed to the tiger. But as if he could not think of any other plan, he did as he was told. He found the tiger still sharpening his claws and teeth. He was very hungry. When he heard that he had to wait still longer for his leader, he began to growl and lash his tail in the most terrible manner, causing the farmer's knees to knock together in terror. Now, when the farmer had left the house, his wife went out to the stable and saddled the pony. Then she put on her husband's best clothes tied the turban high so as to look as tall as possible, jumped astride the pony and set off to the field where the tiger was waiting. She strode along swaggering like a man till she came where the lane turned into the field. And there she called out as bold as brass. Now, please the powers, I may find a tiger in the field. I haven't tasted tiger since yesterday. For I ate three for breakfast. Hearing these words and seeing the speaker ride boldly towards him, the tiger was so alarmed and terrified that he bolted into the forest. Forgetting his hunger and leaving the oxen, and so the wife saved her milk cow, and the farmer recovered his oxen. One, two, the farmer's wife and the tiger. Weren't they simply great? What then is the uniqueness of the chamber theater? Well, it lies in the dual role of each member in the cast, as an actor or actress, as well as a narrator. Each participant is therefore an actor or actress interacting with other characters, yet retaining the role of the narrator who summarizes, describes, and explains to the audience. What is the difference between the chamber theater and the conventional play? A chamber theater production bears resemblance to the conventional play or drama. But they both have characters who speak lines of dialogue and express emotions in a story told through action. The chamber theater and the conventional play differ on the following aspects. One, material or selection used. The conventional drama has for its selection a play which is meant for staging. There is clear-cut delineation between dialogue and stage directions. Whereas in a chamber theater, the dialogue appear with the narrative remarks. There are no stage directions whatsoever. Chamber theater makes use of narrative prose and poetry, usually a tale, 
short story, or part of a novel. Two, unit presentation. In chamber theater, the units of dialogue, action, and narration are presented in a dramatic form as if part of a play. However, each actor or actress plays a dual role of actor or actress who speaks his or her lines and the narrator who says the narrative tags. The formal narrator may stand with a copy in one part of the stage, reading descriptive passages necessary to the upholding of the story. The conventional drama, on the other hand, does not make use of the formal narrator. The actors or the actresses' dialogues, actions and interactions unfold the story. Three, set, props, lighting, sound effects are also done, but they should differ in degree. Chamber theater presentations endorse minimal use of such, especially props and sets, where make-believe is preferred whenever possible. In many instances, props and sets are often imaginary, except for the bare essentials such as tables and chairs. Now that you know much about oral interpretation, I am sure you can do a lot for your students, especially in terms of making them conscious of effective voice projection, delivery, poison stage, and in the use of gestures and other bodily movements. We have come to a close. I shall give you a recap of what we have discussed when we return. Please don't go away.